I know a lot of my family was up. I just FaceTimed them all. I called them all, and it was like 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning there, and everybody was up in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Arizona, Florida. So it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know how many how often it's happened that a first time yeah, pairing has one on one. But, I mean, it's, you know, you get two great players playing together, and, you know, I think a big part of it is, you know, me and Lucy are really good friends, and, you know, communication's huge, and, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. so whether we were down in a match, up in a match, we were having fun, and I think that helps teams really move as well. It's just uh, so special. I mean, uh, I, it's hard to describe the feelings. It's like uh, such a huge happiness because um, to be a Grand Slam champion, it's just um, the best we can uh, have. It's just extreme happiness. It's, it's tough to describe. It's like you practice so many hours, and then. Uh, we practice for this to, to be out there to hold the trophy, so it's just such a satisfaction. It's always a great atmosphere, I think. I'm, I'm, I was happy to be on the court to play semi final again in the Grand Slam. For me, it's something amazing, and uh, even if it was a strange match, I enjoyed to be there for, for more than three hours. Right now I'm more disappointed to lose because I had the feeling that uh, in the game I'm there, I'm playing well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I have everything to win the match tonight, but I didn't, that, that's the reality, so I'm happy with the way I start the season, the way I'm, I'm focused on the practice court every day, trying to improve my game. It's very emotional, very tense, as, as it always is, against a top player and some finals of Grand Slam, of course, um, Judging by the last two matches we played uh, here in Australian Open in the last two years, we could expect something like that five-setter. Uh, so the battle was, was, was great. Everybody who came to watch the match live and who watched it on TV were expecting a five-set match. <laughs> That's what we delivered for them. I'm not proud of the, the fighting spirit that I had, but uh, the, the level of performance was, was not where I wanted it to be. And a very good afternoon everybody, welcome to Melbourne Park on day 13 of the 2015 Australian Open and it's a perfect day in Melbourne town as well. Boyana Babusic in the studio with me before the big juniors finals on Rod Laver Arena and as you just saw in that collage, a great day yesterday. Novak Djokovic getting through to the final, uh, defeating Stan Wawrinka. They've had some fantastic clashes over the years here at Melbourne Park with, uh, well, an emotional roller coaster continuing for Stan Wawrinka. Six love in that uh, fifth set, and you also saw Bethany Maddox Sands and Lucy Safarova, our women's doubles uh, champions. How are you, boy? Good, how are you, Maddie? Going very well. Looking forward to these junior uh, matches. First up, we have the girls' singles final, then the boys' uh, singles final. And what a, a great thrill for these, uh, well, kids, if you can call them that, uh, to play on centre court. Look, it's a fantastic experience for all four players. I think the story of uh, this tournament so far is Katie, who uh, is 15 years old. Um, it's her first time in a Grand Slam final for the juniors, and uh, she's coming up against a young 16-year-old, so it's going to be a really great match for the two of them. And then we have uh, the Russian, Roman Safiulin, against uh, Seong Chan Hong from Korea in the boys' singles. Saw a bit of Hong play yesterday. He beat the Australian Santillan out on show court three. Looked very strong there. And uh, then we have the big final, of course. Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova. Boyana, this is the uh, first time we've seen one and two play each other in a Grand Slam final since the US Open in 2013. Williams and Azarenka played there. Well, Serena's got a 15 to zero winning record so far against Maria, and they haven't, or well, Maria hasn't beaten Serena since 2004. So. The, you know, it's in favour of Serena, but it'll be interesting to see how she pulls up today after yesterday feeling a little bit ill, but um, Marie's going to be firing and ready to go. Let's, uh, before we have a look at all of the action coming up today, recap what happened uh, last night. Novak uh, Djokovic, what a great player he is. Not 100% uh, and, and many would uh, say that Andy Murray's probably played better tennis than Novak Djokovic in their semi-finals, but 
Uh, how does he recover coming into the final here, uh, Djokovic Boyana? Uh, it's one match at a time. Yeah, that's right, Matty. It was an interesting matchup. A lot of breaks of serves last night, a lot of momentum swings as well. But Novak really showed how mentally tough he is, obviously winning that fifth set six games to zero. But we, sure, we saw some fantastic one handed backhands from Warenka, obviously uh, one of the best backhands in the game. But look, Novak's just building in some form, and I think uh, it'll be a really great final tomorrow night. Strange scoreline, uh, six love in the in the fifth. Uh, what in the end was the, the downfall for Vavrinka? Well, I think uh, Novak obviously is too strong off the baseline. He's got such good, uh, great court coverage, and it was just again that mental toughness that got him through that fifth set. See the highlights here. Halfway through, Coach uh, Boris uh, encouraging every step of the way. Those backhands, just pretty to watch from uh, Vavrinka. And you got the impression late uh, in the match that uh, the class was just starting to prevail and, and Djokovic, the, the, the stats are there to be seen, uh, a fifth final here at Melbourne Park. Yeah, it's impressive from Novak, but it was interesting to see that he forgot that he'd won that third set last night. So he sort of didn't see himself, but look, he'll be ready to come up against Murray. Murray's in some great form and um, it's going to be, I think, maybe a tough fifth set for the both of them. Both of the champs, Serena and Novak, have been feeling a little bit under the weather leading into their respective finals, but what a moment it was. It was a five-setter with a difference, no doubt about that. Six love there in the fifth. Can we can get you an early tip for the men's? I think uh, Murray in five. I think his court coverage Murray is just five. superb. All right, well, let's see what Novak Djokovic had to say in his press conference. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did not play on the level that uh, I intended uh, before the match. <clears throat> there were uh, parts of the match where I, where I, you know, stepped in and played a game that I needed to play, but parts of the match where I played too defensive and allowed him to to dictate the play from the baseline. And uh, he has a great depth in his shots, and once he has a control of the rally, it's very difficult to play <clears throat> play against him. So. Um, yeah, uh, it's very emotional, very tense, as, as it always is against a top player in semi-finals of Grand Slam. Of course, uh, judging by the last two matches we played uh, here in Australian Open last two years, we could expect something like that five-setter. Uh, so the battle was 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 great, and there was no different uh, <coughs> this year from from uh, from the previous two years in terms of. Uh, you know, fighting from from both sides, and uh, the only difference was that you know the fifth set went uh, went completely my way, but again it was a, 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 a tight first opening game of the fifth set where he had some op break point opportunities, missed an easy ball. So, yeah, I mean, uh, a couple of points uh, decide a winner in this particular matches when you're playing for for Grand Slam final, and uh, um, I, I I can say I'm. I'm I'm glad, of course, I'm happy and satisfied to go through and uh, uh, I'm, I'm proud of the, the fighting spirit that I had, but um, the, the level of performance was, was not where I wanted it to be. No, no. When Jim Courier spoke to you after the match, he said, did you have any physical issues? And you said, yes, but then you sort of talked tactics rather than going into how yeah. you were feeling. No, it was, I mean, yes, in terms of, uh, um, I, I think it was more, you know, it's it's mental in a way because once you uh, b back up and and start playing defensively, you you, you spend a lot of energy. And uh, he was the one that was dictating the, the rallies. There was no question about it. Uh, so that's that's where I, I, some some points of the match I did struggle uh, physically. Uh, you know, to recover for the next one because I, I run a lot and he was getting a lot of balls balls back in play. I didn't I didn't have many. Three points on the first serve as I did throughout the tournament, so that that was uh, a significant change. Um, but you know, not nothing that that uh, will worry me. You know, I'm sure that I'll be fit and ready for for finals. <laughs> Boy, Anna, it always interests me to uh, hear from these these players that have done so much. I mean, Novak Djokovic is one of the greatest players we've seen, but. Uh, even though he's won numerous Grand Slam uh, titles, it's all about numbers for these players now and how they'll be judged when they retire. And he was quite brutally honest in his assessment of his own game there. Well, I think that press conference really showed how Novak wasn't satisfied
hard with his performance last night. He knows that he has to perform at his best tomorrow night if he's going to get the win against Murray. Uh, physically and mentally, he wasn't there, so he's really going to have to reassess and get ready for tomorrow night. Now, uh, Stan Wawrinka, defending champion, uh, probably flew under the radar a little bit uh, during the first week because of all of the Australian success and all of the hype that surrounded that, especially in the local media. But um, he was under the, the pump in the second week uh, as the defending champion. A lot of pressure uh, in that situation. He was courageous. Yeah, he was. And when you get to the second week, it's like Joe uh, Novak said, a lot of it is mental and physical. And I think come that fifth set, when he lost that tough uh, first game, it really got to him. And then when you get your serve broken, it's really hard to come back. So credit to Stan for getting to the semis. But look, it's going to be a great final tomorrow night between Novak and Andy Murray. Before we talk about that, uh, let's uh, hear from Stan from his press conference last night. Describe the match. Yes. Strange. <laughs> Not the best for sure. Uh, I think it was a lot of up and down. Uh, the beginning condition was not easy. It's quite flying a little bit. Balls are not easy to con not easy to control and yeah, not much. It was not uh, the best the best match for sure. Uh, uh, I don't know. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> You asked for eye drops. And Sorry? You asked for eye drops. Yeah, exactly. Could you explain? Nothing special. On? Just needed. Didn't work well for just after, but it was okay. Nothing special. Stan, why do you think there are so many up and downs? And both you and Novak seem to have trouble keeping your best level. Uh, I don't know. At the beginning, as I said, for me it was the first night session. I had to adapt a little bit the game. Uh, it's not. It's quite fast this year. It's not easy to control. And uh, again, I think uh, I'm physically well. I'm playing well in general. Really happy with my level. But uh, I was mentally dead. I think I'm paying off the price to to finish really late the season with Davis Cup. Not having a bigger uh, off season. Trying to focus really well to start the well. Uh, to start well the year with winning Chennai and being here, trying to do the best and. Uh, I told all my coach before the match and already yesterday that uh, I was mentally completely dead and no battery. Uh, tough to focus on, on what I want to do and tough to focus on my game and that's what happened today. Coming into this match knowing that the last two times you played here were these big classic epics and you have to set the bar is very high for this match again. <laughs> No, for that uh, there is no no pressure. For that, I'm I'm surprised we went five set again, even if the last one was ten minutes. But uh, uh, no, for sure was was we had some great battle here last two years, and uh, today was a uh, was strange match. Uh, he was there, he was uh, playing good enough to win, and he deserved to to win and to play the final. Well, despite the fact he got beaten, he still looked quite satisfied with his own performance, really. And uh, uh, he's a real family man. He'll be jetting back to Switzerland now. And uh, it's quite ironic that we've all been calling him Stan the Man for years, and he's finally embraced it uh, with his clothing. Oh, that's right. Stan sort of flies under the radar, not the biggest personality going out there. And as we saw in his post-match, very humble. And he knows it wasn't his best performance, but look, I'm sure we'll see him throughout the year perform at his best. Now, if you were coaching, put yourself in uh, uh, the coach's role for a moment. You're coaching Andy Murray. What do you tell him? For three things to beat Novak Djokovic. Probably the first thing would be his court coverage, and I saw that really well against Dimitriov the other day. The other thing would be he has to stay up on the baseline against Novak. He's not going to get a lot of free points. So I think from the get-go, he's really going to have to make a stance and not uh, give too many free points to Novak. And then probably the third thing would have to be his first serve percentage. If he can get a few more free points off his serve, then he'll be in a good position to, to win the match. He was really pumped up the other night, wasn't he, uh, against uh, Burdic. So we have a look at uh, Andy in action and hitting some clear winners there off the forehand side. And you're a, you're a fan, you think Murray in five? I think so, I saw him play at the Hotman Cup and is uh, in some really good form physically and mentally and seeing him perform through these last couple of weeks, I think he's in some really good shape. So I'm thinking Murray in five. We're going to take a break and we'll look ahead to tonight's women's singles final and also the juniors coming up next. Pretty good, 
actually. Uh, you won gold for basketball in Beijing. Describe the feeling. Uh, it was a pretty incredible feeling to be 17 and win a gold medal. Representing your country, to be honest, it doesn't get any better than that. It was uh, definitely the highlight of my life. Uh, why did you switch from basketball to tennis? Uh, I really wanted to get a tan, to be honest, but I did enjoy basketball, but I'd done everything that I had done, and I wanted to do something uh, new, and I love tennis, and it's uh, it's been a good switch. Uh, what was your favorite social media site, and why? My favorite social media site is probably Instagram. I'd love to be more Instagram famous. Uh, I think I'm slowly getting there, but everyone get around me. At Dylan Alcott, come find me. You're a big rap fan. Can you give us a verse from your favorite song? All right, well, I rapped this on stage uh, the other day with the Wu-Tang Clan. I'll just do the first two lines. All right. It's a method man for short, Mr. Matt. Move it on your left, ha. Set it off, get it off, let it off like a gat. I want to break free, cut me back. Small change, we put my shame in the game. I take aim, got the brother at, ooh. I'll just cut it there, because that's when I start swearing. How'd it go? <laughs> Tell us about your recent 24-hour tennis challenge. Um, I just played tennis for 24 hours non-stop. It was the most ridiculous and painful idea I've ever done. Well, I've got like big scars from the past, and my wrist was three times the size for about two weeks afterwards. So I've had injections in it to try and get it right for, for this week, for the Australian Open. So uh, it was probably not the best timing to do it, but to raise $100,000 for charities that helped me as a kid was, was incredible. Why the Starlight Foundation? I was very sick in hospital when I was 10. I spent about six months on my stomach and they gave my, my family and I a wish to go away and, uh, and have a good time. So I really needed it, not so much for me, but also my family. So it's my way of giving back and trying to help other kids with disabilities so they can you know, achieve all their goals in life. Do you ever need the tour during matches? I think some of the guys I play against often take tour breaks when you start winning. But uh, no, no, I do go a little bit, which is a bit annoying. What's the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened uh, to you on tour? I was at the Brisbane International and I was lucky enough uh, to win and I got my trophy. And I had my bag on the back of my chair and we were taking the photo and I fell out backwards of my wheelchair on the ground as I was taking the photo. But I didn't smash the trophy, so that was a good result, but it was very embarrassing. I felt like a massive idiot. Advice for anyone with a disability. Well, I think the best advice I can give is uh, don't really worry that you have a disability. I think I don't really care that I'm in a wheelchair. I actually love it. And if I could eat a magic pill and walk again, you could not pay me enough money to do it. Um, just just go to work with what you got and I live the best life ever. So please get out there and enjoy life, even though it's a bit different. Um, being different is definitely good. The Kia Cerato has surprised many of Australia's leading journalists since its launch. Paul Gover from Cars Guide said, the Cerato hatch is the new Kia we've been waiting for and another surefire winner. And Tim Weissman from caradvice.com.au said, the all new Cerato is packed with the latest technology. The Kia Cerato hatch. It surprised the motoring experts. And with Australia's only seven year unlimited kilometre factory warranty, it will surprise you too. Join the rally for good. The more people we get involved, the more money we raise for a good cause. Ready? Keep the rally going by posting your shot your way using hashtag rally for good. Your game, your way.
they're pretty good with the detail. They've even got the tape on the knee. Yeah, I know. You know, when I was doing this pose, I was standing like four hours. I, I didn't move, you know. Our 2014 Women's Australian Open Champion, Lee Na. Do you miss the game of tennis? If my body can play, I will continue to play. Me and Dennis, we are so excited. Our first child will be all of this summer. I think Dennis doing a good job. He just make one ace. Some great shots, great shots there of uh, Lee Nair and uh, Boyana. You just get the impression over the next uh, many, many years she's going to be a real ornament for the sport. Yeah, no, it's great to see Lee Nair still involved in the sport, a great model for our upcoming juniors and even the females still on tour. So it's nice to see that she's still involved in the sport and being a role model. What did you think of the statue? That was absolutely spot on. It wasn't even Lee Nair said it was similar, so yeah. I think she was pretty happy with what she saw. Yeah, she said she had to stand still for two hours, but I think it was uh, certainly worth it. Coming up very so. by the way, uh, that Kia Open Drive segment with Dylan Alcott, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Dylan is playing later on today on court six in the uh, wheelie singles. There was a match here last night. It was the wheelchair women's doubles that went for three and a half hours. It was an absolute epic out on court seven. It's great entertainment. So if you're in the grounds uh, around about five o'clock, uh, Dylan's playing David Wagner. They're the top two seeds that are playing each other in the singles final. So good luck to both uh, boys. But that was a really lovely segment with uh, Dylan. Great insight. No, definitely, and I, it shows a lot about Dylan and the type of character he is, and moving from basketball to tennis is just proves how uh, physically able he is to do such things, and it's great to see him out on court and jump out today and have a watch. So the women's singles final uh, tonight, and uh, a real uh, build-up, uh, plenty of entertainment. We're going to celebrate the 30th anniversary of that great final at Kuyong between Chris Everett Lloyd and also Martina Navratilova, which Martina was able to win in three sets. That was some 30 years ago in 1985. There'll be a big celebration of that. And then the top two, Williams and Sharapova. Your thoughts? Well, obviously the odds are in Serena's favour. She has a 15-match winning streak, uh, hasn't lost to Maria since 2004, but it's the first time we've seen the number one and the number two seed play since 2004. So I think a little bit of it will depend upon how Serena turns up physically today. She was a bit sick uh, yesterday, you know, practice match. But look... They're both great competitors. They both fight hard and compete. So I think it's going to be a tight match, but I think Serena will get over the line. Yes, yeah, Serena had to reschedule her practice session, didn't she? She went out first, uh, started coughing and, and came back later. So she's slow. I suppose it's a very hard thing to recover. She's just picked up a cold over the last four or five uh, days. And when you've got media commitments, games to play, it is tough to get over it. And emotionally and physically as well, when you come to the end of the tournament, there's a lot of emotions that run through your mind and the body sometimes can break down. But look, Serena against Madison Keys wasn't feeling 100%, but managed to get through. She was flawless against Dominika Sibylkova in a quarterfinal match. So Serena knows how to win a, win a Grand Slam final, so I think uh, she'll be in some fine form. Sharapova looked great the other day. Let's uh, have a look at how both ladies got to the final. Grand Slam titles are never easy to come by. They are the culmination of a great many ingredients. Some have learned the recipe to success and have repeated it time and time again. Competing for the Daphne Ackhurst Memorial Cup in the Australian Open final are two such players. One, a powerhouse of women's tennis for the past decade and a half. Five times Australian Open champion with 18 Grand Slam titles to her name. One of the greatest players of the modern era. 
the other, a ruthless competitor from Russia. 2008 Australian champion among five Grand Slam titles, widely regarded as the most popular female athlete in the world. Serena Williams entered the tournament with her number one ranking on the line. She suffered losses to top ten rivals Agnieszka Radwanska and Eugenie Bouchard at the Hopman Cup in Perth. Williams hadn't heard of her first round opponent at the Australian Open, Alison Van Eyfunk, but her lack of knowledge didn't stop her from making light work of the 20-year-old Belgian in just over an hour. Although troubled in her second round clash with Vera Zvonareva, Williams strung together 10 consecutive games and dropped just 8 points in the second set to advance. Her real challenges came in the third and fourth rounds against seeded players Elena Svitolina and Gabinia Muguruza. On both occasions, Williams found herself a set down and needed to dig deep to get her desired result. And on both occasions, the comebacks were emphatic. A quarterfinal showdown with last year's finalist Dominika Sabulkova looked tough on paper, especially with Williams battling a cold. But the world number one swept aside the Slovak with ease to reach the semis. Within sight of a sixth Australian Open final, Williams had one more hurdle to leap, and it came in the form of American giant killer Madison Keys. The 19 year old made life tough for the top seed early, forcing Williams into her first tiebreaker of the tournament. But a solid performance laid the foundations for a dominant second set and the veteran was through to another final. Maria Sharapova had already tasted success in 2015, winning her 34th career title with victory over Anna Ivanovic in Brisbane. It was the perfect preparation for her first round clash at the Open with Croatian qualifier Petra Martic, whom she dispatched in straight sets. Sharapova was issued a second round challenge from Russian qualifier Alexandra Panova, who took a set off her and had two match point opportunities in the third. But the number two seed survived another day. Zarina Diaz and Kung Shui caused no such problems for Sharapova. She brushed both aside with little effort, including a run of eight straight games against the Chinese woman. On paper, the Russians' quarterfinal against Eugenie Bouchard looked a real contest. But with experience and class on her side, Sharapova wiped the 2014 semi finalist off the court to advance to the semis. There, she would face another Russian, this time 10th seed Ekaterina Makarova, who'd made an impressive run to the last four. But her run was halted by the relentless Sharapova, with another straight sets win securing a 10th Grand Slam final appearance. And so the stage is set, the battle lines drawn, as old foes prepare to meet again in the final to have their name etched on the trophy and secure their place in history. It's a great uh, contest in prospect uh, with Maria Sharapova making her fourth final here at Melbourne Park, Serena Williams her sixth. Can we get a tip from you, Boyana? I think I called earlier Serena in three. Serena in three, all right. Well, uh, we have uh, over the years had some straight sets victories in women's uh, singles final, so hopefully it does go the distance uh, tonight. Uh, I think it will. This is the schedule. We have Katie Swan from Great Britain in the girls' singles final coming away in a moment. Teresa Mahalakova from Slovakia is her opponent. Katie Swan, the uh, number 14 seed, and uh, took uh, a few titles last year. 
uh, and was a winner at Copenhagen and also was runner-up in her last three efforts in Japan, Canada and also at the Easter Bowl uh, in the US. Following that match we have Roman Safiulin from Russia, the number one seed against Seong Chan Hong from Korea, the number seven seed. And then not before 7.30, as I mentioned, about 10 past seven, that uh, pre-match entertainment, followed by Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova. And then the men's doubles, we haven't touched on that, but it'll be uh, very passionate, that's for sure. The two Italians, Simone Bolelli and Fabio Fonini, up against the Frenchman, Pierre Hughes Hebe and Nicolas Mahou. So uh, looking forward to that after the uh, women's doubles. And happening on court six, we have the wheelchair play, uh, including the first matchup, women's singles, Yui Kamiji and Yiska Griffion from Netherlands. And then the combination in the men's that played with each other uh, last night to take the Australian Open doubles championship, Shingo Kanita and Stefan Houdet from France. And then the singles action, uh, again, David Wagner and Dylan Alcott. That's taking place out on court six. There'll be a big ceremony about 6 p.m. tonight in Garden Square with all of our wheelchair winners and also the juniors as well. Pullmans and Delaney taking out the boys' doubles as well, Boyana, uh, last night. So a bit of Australian success there. Oh, great to see the Aussies continue on in this second week. And I think it's a bright future for our men and also our younger athletes coming through. Good to see uh, some of uh, the crowd coming in early at Rod Laver Arena. This is a great uh, idea. Uh, about three years ago, the uh, powers that be started doing this at the Australian Open, having the juniors play their finals on Rod Laver Arena. Great way to get experience in the big stadiums. Uh, I know when we were commentating the qualifying together, Boyana, they're bigger courts, so there's a lot to get used to, and it's a great experience. Well, it's a perfect preparation for the juniors to try and make that transition into the seniors. And what a great opportunity for these two young ladies, 15 years of age and 16 years of age. So they'll be looking to try and soak up some atmosphere and really try and pave their way into the uh, WTA tour. Well, two years ago, Boyana, on this day, uh, Nick Kyrgios played Thanasi Kokonakis in the uh, boys singles final. So who knows? Uh, what we'll be seeing uh, this afternoon. So this is the match between Katie Swan from Great Britain and Teresa Mihalikova from uh, Slovakia. And I believe very shortly to pick up commentary, uh, Gary Wilkinson and Karen Pratt. There'll be some emotion in that match. France versus Italy. Simon Bolelli and Fabio Fanini against Pierre Herbe and Nicolas Mahou. But this is the one that takes our attention first of all, Karen Pratt, and a great chance to see what uh, these young ladies have uh, got to offer from a future perspective of women's tennis. Most definitely heading out for the toss right, now. Girls, best of three sets. First two tiebreak finals at advantage. We do play with hard pad today, so you have the possibility to challenge calls. But if you do so, please do it immediately and make it clear. For instance, by calling challenge. All right. Any questions for that? No. All good. Heads or tails? Heads. Tails it is. You will serve. You stay here. I just got a couple of bananas. Is that possible? Yes, I can ask. Thank you. It's Umpire Bjorn Betstein from Australia in, uh, in charge of this uh, junior girls final. Well, it's a huge moment for both of them because they're out here on one of the world's big stadium courts in Rod Laver Arena. Uh, that in itself is an experience for both of these teenagers. And also they'll get to use the uh, challenge system so they can challenge shots. So that, that also is something different for them. You don't normally get that in the junior events. So a couple of big differences. And um, are they wearing the same outfits? It looks very similar very anyway, the pinks and the whites. But this is Teresa Mihalikova of Slovakia. She's the older of the two at 16 and number 52 in the junior rankings right now. 
but she's really uh, sprung a few upsets on the way through. Certainly has. She was here last year. She's had the experience of playing the Australian Juniors previously. And Katie Swan, she carries the hopes of Great Britain. A lot of focus on her back home. Well, along with Andy Murray. Yes, but <laughs> this is on the female side of the game. Much excitement that she could uh, come through to be a player of Murray's calibre. Well, it's only her third uh, Junior Grand Slam tournament, uh, Katie Swan. Big result after losing in the first and second round Wimbledon and the US Open, respectively, last year. And here she is through to the final. She did reach the uh, junior doubles quarterfinals at, uh, at Flushing Meadow. But she's worked her way through the junior grades over the last uh, couple of seasons. She's reached finals of six international junior events <laughs> all over the place. I mean, she's been everywhere. Bolivia, Guatemala, United States, Canada, Japan. She won the Winter Cup at Copenhagen in, uh, in Denmark. And now here she is in the uh, final of the Australian Junior Grand Slam. Teresa Mihalikova getting a big hand being introduced to uh, the crowd. Right-hander with a two-handed uh, backhand, both of them uh, adhering to that uh, formula. Uh, Mahela Kova was here last year, reached the uh, the third round. That's her best Junior Grand Slam singles result prior to, to this, but in doubles, she was a finalist at the US Juniors last year and also a runner-up in doubles at the famed Orange Bowl Championships in the United States. In other international junior singles events over the past two seasons, Teresa's had a runner-up finish at uh, the Podgorica Open in Montenegro, scored tournament victories in Ukraine, Slovenia, Poland. She was a member of uh, the Slovak team that finished runners-up in last year's Junior Fed Cup Finals. Yes, that was a terrific effort to get through to that final. They lost to the USA, who have got a very handy team with uh, Tornado Black and CeCe Bellis, two of the great young players coming through for the Americans. Now, I don't know if I understood, misunderstood this in my research, but how is it then uh, that Mahalikova was supposedly, in 2013, a member of the winning USA team at the ITF World Junior Finals? If she's from Slovakia, that uh, can't be correct. I think there's a misprint there, so we'll discard that one. Um, and it doesn't rank anyway with uh, the results that she has. she's had since then. Speaking of USA, Katie Swan is from Bristol in the UK, but is now resident in the United States. Lives in Wichita, Kansas. Her dad's a big hitter, corporate high flyer, speaks several, and when I say several, I mean three or four languages and works for a big American corporation. He's taking care of business. Mum, Nikki, is here taking care of Katie. Had a quick word with um, Joe Dury, uh, our uh, fellow commentator, in fact, who occupies the commentary box next door to us uh, for Eurosport. And uh, she's too from Bristol and has had some experience hitting with uh, Katie Swan prior to her moving to, uh, to the US. And uh, she's got a pretty high opinion of this young lady. Tough, competitive, good serve. Forehand needs a little bit of work. She's not happy with uh, the speed round the court either, working on fitness and court movement. One minute. One minute remaining in the warm-up, and then we'll have uh, the action underway here. And, of course, uh, the boys' singles final uh, will follow this, and that's going to be a, a different kettle of fish there. Unfortunately for local fans, no Australian competitor through to the final, either the girls or the boys' singles. They went close, though, in the, in the boys' singles final. Yes, with a in the boys singles, rather. coming through to the semi-final. And also in the boys' doubles, Australians winning that, Jake Delaney and Mark Polmans. Czech pair winning the junior girls' doubles. So it's been really spread around the nations. No one from Slovakia has featured at this stage of the juniors here at the Australian Open. So this is 
Big for her country, for Teresa. Being the first Slovakian to reach a final of a junior event at the Australian Open. Time. Time. First set. First set. Pull up fifty. Halakova beat the number two seed Jill Teichman of Switzerland in a tough three setter, 7 5 in the third. Also, Sarah Tomic of Australia in a three setter. And two straight sets, victories to follow up from those. To be an unseeded player through. Swan beat the uh, the top seed in the girls draw in the third round the, uh, the Chinese player Su Shi Lin yeah, she beat a two and two which is uh, a, a great win her semi-final was her toughest match a huge battle Fifteen. Yeah, she beat uh, Dalma Galfi, the Hungarian player, the fifth seed in the semis. Took more than two and a half hours, and that was only yesterday. Oh! 30 old. wonder how Swans pulled up from that. It was love six seven six seven five, and she had to save three match points on her way to that victory. It was cramping in the third set. Four. So it's a very dramatic semi-final. Yes. Well, that previous serve on the right court before also looked very deep. Um, I'm wondering if Katie Swan will challenge if she's got a doubt about one. May not have used the challenge system before. Didn't need to that time, though. rally there from both girls and it's Mahalukova with the presence of mind to throw the drop shot in. Already we've seen some good variety in her game out here. Swan way behind the baseline. Sees her opportunity. Nicely played. That's why she has the wraps, Katie Swan. Cheers. Cheers. 
Good aggressive point from her there. Just a bit more pace on these forehands with that ball sitting up mid-court. She takes advantage of it. Nice feel on the volley. Good job from Halakova, mixing up the sort of serve she's sending down. Sliding that last one out wide. Oh. First came Halakova from game. the Slovak Republic. Tall girl, she's a metre... 80 at the age of 16. There's probably a couple of centimetres of growing still to come. But that's largely the trend, isn't it, in uh, tennis, women's tennis. In particular at the moment, Sharapova and uh, company, all very tall players, around the six foot or a little over mark. And uh, the former great player from the Slovak Republic, um, Helena Sukova, she was tall and... Czech Republic? Czech Republic, Helena, I beg your pardon, yes. Czechoslovakia then. But uh, Dominika Sibulkova leads the way <laughs> for um, the Slovakians' women's okay, rankings. And uh, she's a short player. She's, she's one of the more diminutive players on the tour. Wouldn't be a metre 80 standing on a milk crate. Again, the shorter ball catching Swan, who is way behind the baseline. Oh. Lost it. She's had quite a lot to deal with over the week. They all have, of course, but for Katie Swan, only 15 and with less experience than Mahala Kova, had to get over the excitement of defeating the top seed early on and bounce back from that, which she did. And then the drama of yesterday's semi. Yes, that might be harder to bounce uh, back from physically, but we'll find out as, uh, as things progress here. Stepped out to the forehand, Mahela Kova. Cracked it back, 158 uh, k's as good as the serve. Oh, 
And that's the break point, the break uh, of the yeah, first, yeah, yeah. Game, first break is what I'm trying to say of the match. Maybe a few nerves out there from Katie Swan and also maybe physically hurting a little after the long match yesterday when you've had an experience like that where it's been quite dramatic, you've had to really fight back in a match, suffering from cramps, those sorts of things. Luck going Halakova's way. So far, the Slovakian has just been hitting a little more aggressively, a bit more power on her groundies, hitting the spots on serve. She's got the sun to deal with at that far end of the court in a tough spot. That's better. Tried to get in earlier. Approach shot wasn't quite uh, up to the task. Forced back to the baseline, but finally gets the winner. Oh, it's a good style of point she just played there, being very aggressive. And again, just a bit more power on these shots when she was able to get the ball out in front of her. Good footwork positioning for this last one. Really lined it up. Came up with the winner. Thirty-fifteen. Thirty-fifteen. Thirty Halakova just not able to quite handle the deflection of the ball there. Bit of luck going Swan's way. Bit embarrassed with what she did there. Wrong, wrong choice. Mihalikova. Three games to love, Mihalikova, Slovak player, ahead in the opening Mihalikova set of the junior final here. And not giving uh, Swan much opportunity to shorten up the points here. You figure that's what Swan would like to do after the exertions of her semi-final uh, battle. And we've seen her effective in uh, trying to get to the net couple of occasions she's had the opportunity but uh, Mahalikova strong on the forehand is uh, hitting with uh, tremendous depth and uh, Swan's had little or limited opportunities to try and shorten up the points to this juncture in the match.
Katie Swan yet to post a number on the scoreboard. Serving. Lens. Mahalakova really thinking well out here. I saw the slice backhand setting things up. This one here really manoeuvring Swan way over that side of the court. Open it up for the forehand, which she flattened out for the winner. Oh, dear me, and a stinging backhand down the line for yet another oh, winner. That's a difficult one to read where she was going to hit this. She's looking very confident at the moment with the three love lead, going for a little bit more on her shots now. Mahalakova, dangerous for Swan. And again, showing how confident she's feeling going after that forehand. An aggressive mindset. This is such an important game for Katie Swan to try and get on the board. She can make a real statement here after having been down love 30. Thirty, forty. Or she could be down love four. Break point again here. Good serve, 179 kilometres per hour. Yes. Fastest we've seen out there yet. Mahalakova, not afraid to uh, venture in for the short ball. Well, she's really do doing well with her returns, and Swan's going to have to really find something more on serve. Another. Actually, winning more points off her second serve than her first at the moment. Not many off either. Okay. Another break. For Teresa Mahalakova, four games to love. Oh, just playing too well in all departments at the moment, Teresa Mahalakova. Serving. 
seven winners, seven unforced errors, but she's also forced a lot of errors from Swan. And getting great results off a first serve. Serving at about the same percentage, the two players, but uh, Mahala Koba winning 90% off a first serve. Did well to dig out those two backhands, Mahalakova. And leave it to Swan to miss. Well, this short ball massacred by Mihalikova. This one has to find a way to keep that ball deeper, do a little bit more with her shots. Nothing going Swan's way. Mahalikova holds serve with comfort and leads by five games to love. Mahalikova leads five games to love. I think in fairness, we've got to say we've not uh, seen anywhere near the best of uh, Katie Swan. And maybe, as we observed at the outset, it's the, the trial of the semi-final. The victory still taking its uh, physical toll on her. I think a few nerves going out here as well, and she has taken longer to settle down, and Mahalikova has really taken advantage of that. Swan only able to produce two winners, six unforced errors, and it's felt like a little bit more than that because Mahalikova has been really pressing her and forcing many errors as well. For the Slovakian, nine winners and seven unforced errors, so it's always good when that ledger is positive. Well, Swan knows that she can improve out here. She can certainly do a bit more with her serve, and that's the task. Love Too often just not hitting that ball cleanly. It's not coming off the strings with a good sound. Just the timing not quite right. Fifteen. Two in a row, she's missed. Not quite so jocular about this one.
Harper standing a long way back with her returning. Definitely she would be vulnerable to some sliders. Swan having success with more slice on the ball. Outstanding play by Mahalakoba. Forehand, backhand, volley. She's got yes. it all. Well, once again, she had Swan on the stretch and she moves forward in the court and looks very comfortable around the net, anticipates well and picks off that last volley. game point to get on the scoreboard here but it's tough going only won three of ten points when her first serve has gone in. A contrast, six of 12, 50% of her second serves. Mahalikov quite likes the pace. Set point for Mahalikova. Good shot there from Swan. Yes. He's putting a different sort of ball in on that last forehand. This next one. Right here. And she just gives it more air. It's deeper in the court and tougher 
for Mihaila Kova to control. An ace helps to save uh, the situation for the uh, moment. Yes. Anyway, for Swan, her first of the match gives her a fourth game point. Success at last for Katie Swan. Yes. And generous applause and encouragement from uh, the crowd on Rod Laver Arena as she gets on the scoreboard in the first set here of the girls' final. Well, that has to feel a lot better for Katie Swan. Good move here. Keeps her cool. Fifteen she's got a good reach around the net and has done well when she's come in. Nine times, she's won six of those points. Make that seven of ten. Even if she doesn't make it back in this set, for Katie Swan it's important that she makes her presence felt out here, plays her way into some form. That's much better tennis from a... 15-30. More margin for error on those shots from Swan. Still well placed. Challenge. Our first yeah, challenge for the match from Mahalakova. Certainly worth a look this one. She uses a height well, Mahalakova. Oh. Oh, by the barest, barest margin. So close. Second second. We'll just miss that one, but some better signs from Swan. Trying to keep good depth with her shots. Second serve on set point for Mahalakova. That's out. That's the first set. Six games to one in 34 minutes to Teresa Mahalakova from the Slovak Republic.
Well, uh, Boyana Babusic with me here in uh, our host set and, uh, well, a little bit of a surprise to see this blow out so quickly. 6-1 in the first set in the uh, girls' final. Uh, Teresa Mihalikova probably coming in as the underdog, uh, but a real surprise. Uh, Katie Swan uh, didn't pull up that well after her last match. She cramped in that three-set match, so maybe that's taken its toll. Well, physically, maybe that's one of the things that didn't help her in that first set. But credit to Mila Hakova, who is obviously the power player. She's uh, hitting some big shots off the, off the baseline, big first serve. So she's creating some pressure against Swan. And Swan will just have to come out and try and establish herself off that baseline if she's to get back into the second set. Yeah, some good uh, first serve stats for uh, Teresa Mihalikova as we have a look at the first set summary. So 6-1. In the first, what can Swan do to turn this one around, uh, Boyana? Well, the first thing she'll have to do is try and get that first serve percentage up. Currently not winning enough uh, points off her serve and then obviously trying to cut down on a few of those unforced errors and start applying a bit of pressure. We're slowly uh, building up to the big match tonight. Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova. That uh, commencing at around 7.30. If you're uh, wandering around the grounds of Grand Slam Oval or Garden Square, we've also got the wheelchair finals taking place on Court 6. We've currently got the uh, women's singles final. Uh, Kamiji from uh, Japan and uh, Griffion from uh, Netherlands. That match uh, is quite uh, nicely poised at the moment at 4-3 on serve. So you can uh, go and have a look at that on court six. But in the meantime, back to Rod Laver Arena for the second set here. We'll see how Katie Swan from Great Britain can uh, respond here with Teresa Mihalikova leading one set to love. Second, second set. set. Swan to serve. And maybe if um, Mahalikova has to play catch-up tennis, an opportunity might arise for, uh, for Swan. Confidence from Mahalikova on the front foot. Oh! 15-13. Fifty. Well, tale of woe continues here for uh, Katie Swan. No, misjudge that. But uh, she could afford to there make the attempt. Well, it's a great play. The thing is that she's really pinning Swan back behind the baseline. So it's the perfect shot to play with her opponent way back in the court. Just couldn't pull it off that time.
having another a deep second serve. Adiko has challenged the call on the left service line. The ball was called in. Too deep. Okay, will tell us. No, it, spot on. I think it just shot on to her quite quickly. Deuce. Deuce. Advantage Swan. Harikov has two challenges remain. Too sharp. Mahalikova at the net. Swan did all the right things. Yes. Absolutely brilliant play from Mihalikova. Once again, her reactions at the net. Terrific. Here, it's a bit more of a defensive volley, but she reads where that's going, cuts it off. Advantage. Well, what a fight this is in the first game of the second set. Second game point here for Swan. Survived three break points. Games and won. wins the opening game of the second set. Well, that has to be heartening for her. First game, second set. Well, that was a huge hold for Swan. Had to really get away to a good start in the second set. Playing in this big stadium prestige event here. Junior singles at the Grand Slams. It means so much to their careers. A peerless summer's day in Melbourne. Best day, in fact, weather-wise, condition-wise, of uh, the tournament. It's been nice right throughout. Moderate conditions, one day of rain. Last Monday on uh, Australia Day, surprisingly cool, and it's uh, it's moderate conditions today, but uh, the sun is shining and uh, all is well with the world, except for Katie Swan at the moment. But there are hopeful signs. Halakova was unsure about an early call on the baseline there, raised her hands, but uh, played on, didn't challenge. She had the option. She could have stopped play. Better signs from Swan in that point too. She's just taking a little bit of the pace off some of those forehands when she's in the rallies and giving them a bit more air over the net. Third two left. Sort of stretching out at the change of ends, looking a bit uncomfortable with the right leg, and she's doing it again now. Maybe a legacy of yesterday's tough match, more than two and a half hours. And a week of pretty intense tennis, physically and mentally. Let's not she get, forget she's only 15 Four years of nine. age. Number 32 in the world in the junior ranks.
forte 15. Oh, she was able to get around and get a good strike on the off forehand. It's a sort of tennis that has got her through to the final, using the forehand to set the points up. But her opponent has really restricted her. First foot fault called on Teresa. Oh, great. Swan outmanoeuvres her opponent and uh, the forehand from out of court right into yes. the corner. Well, this is a terrific point with Swan able to dictate there the ball out in front. Then she chooses her moment to go down the line. Great depth. Just finding a range with the forehand. Oh, she did well, Swan. Sw serve into the body, played awkwardly, but got it back in play and has come up with the winner and has got her first break point against the Slovak player. Clever play by Swan. Great defensive lob. Game Swan. And she breaks for the first time in the match and leads by two love in the second Swan set. Leads. Two games two love. The tide maybe has uh, turned. Well, it certainly has turned. How strongly? We'll find out. This was a very smart shot because the sun is extremely difficult up there. We've seen how strong Mahalakova is at the net, the forehand. That one tricky. Fifteen left. had to adjust her foot in there and let the ball drop a little too low. Well, Swan played a great point to get into the position for that last shot. Certainly seen her play a lot better in the last few games. That last shot aside, the forehand working much better for an out.
Just much better serving, looking more comfortable out there now, Swan. Halakova started this match well, but Swan is really settling out there. Perhaps it's taken her some time to get accustomed to the occasion, the court, and loosen up. Ah! Three games to love Swan now, as opposed to the first set where uh, Mihalikova raced out to the early lead and went on to uh, take the set comfortably. But Swan looking much more confident in the second set and with the service break uh, in hand. She's still bothered by that right leg though and in fact she has called for the trainer. The trainer yeah. She was stretching it out a few times in that game. So she'll get some treatment on it. It could it just be the legacy of the cramping yesterday. Or she may have something that's sore from the long match. And if it's the right adductor, we may see her go off court for treatment. years of age and playing in the biggest match of her career. We're seeing some good tennis from Katie Swan as this match has gone on. Couldn't show us her best in the opening set. And now she has a few issues with the right leg. Yes, she's leaving the court. So she'll go off court. They've had a chat and assess the injury or the soreness. And I'd say for modesty reasons, they'll take her off court. If it is in that adductor or thigh area. And there'll be a three minute treatment period that will start once they get into the room. The umpire will be notified of when that time starts and the clock will go on. Well, it gives uh, Teresa Mihalikova time to contemplate. Not that she wants to. She'd rather be getting on with the match. But at uh, three love down in the second set, she'll be able to review what's happened in the last few games where... Swan has been able to vary her play sufficiently despite the fact that she seems to be carrying a slight injury problem with the right leg, has been able to vary her play sufficiently to uh, put Mihalikova under some pressure. Yeah. Rod Labour Arena, the outside uh, courts now nowhere near as busy as they've been over the past fortnight as the numbers have reduced day by day and the vanquished have uh, moved on the caravan moves on another city another tournament it's quite strange the contrast isn't it empty corridors in the second week here's what they're playing for the junior girls singles trophy and of course Ladies the incredible prestige that comes with winning one of the junior Grand Slams. 
Yes, early in the tournament with all of the outside uh, courts in action and then with the play after the first few days getting underway and uh, legends and juniors, massive crowds, 80,000 plus one day, 70, 78,000, 76,000 common. And the one blight on attendances was the rain on Australia Day that restricted play mostly to the three covered enclosures, Rod Laver, Margaret Court and, uh, and High Sense. But uh, with the rate of attrition as the tournament goes on, we're now down focusing just on Rod Laver Arena, so instead of 75, 80,000 a day, now down to crowds of uh, 22,000 thereabouts, a few more, a few less. And of course, packed house tonight for the women's singles final between Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova. And likewise, tomorrow night for the men's singles final, Novak Djokovic and uh, Andy Murray. But they will crack 700,000 spectators for the two weeks a record 683 the current record number they'll surpass that today well the facility and the tournament getting better year by year and we've seen fabulous matches here tough here for Teresa Mihalikova in such a big match having to sit there but I do think that momentum was with Katie Swan, so it'll give the Slovakian a little bit of time to regroup. It'll probably do her good as long as she can just stay in the zone out there. And a real turnaround in this second set. I'm sure a lot of eyes on her back home in Slovakia wanting to know how she goes here. First Slovakian to reach the final of a junior event at the Australian Open. I was looking through some of the records of the other Grand Slams and it was 1998 at Junior Wimbledon when Katarina Srobotnik won the singles there. That was the uh, last time I could see, only time I could see any Slovakian winning or featuring the final of the junior girls. Srobotnik's still out there. She's been top flight doubles player for uh, many years now. And uh, still competing on the WTA tour. Getting a little impatient now. <laughs> Mahalikova. She's ready to go. And here comes Swan back to the uh, arena. Bjorn Wittstein, the umpire, calls things to order. Approaching the one-hour mark in the match. First set to Mahalikova, 6-1, but a break here for Swan, and uh, she's ahead 3-1. Three, 3 love rather, Mahalikova to serve. Fifteen love. Can't see any strapping there. Unless it's very high up. Well, movement's going to be the key now for Swan, having gotten back into the match at uh, three love in the second set. All important uh, for her. Well, Mahalikova will be testing out that right leg. 
That time moving it wide to the forehand. Far too left. That's what she's done so well throughout this match, set things up with her serve. Dribbled over the net. Mahalakova. Far to 15. Not able to get there. That was a good serve. Swan just lucky to get her racket to it. Very fortunate. Okay, Mialikova. Miss Swan leads. Three games to one. We'll get a better guide here as to uh, Swan's physical condition. Flexing the leg as she stepped back here for the second serve. Mahalakova using the pace there, moving forward nicely. Loves to hit that ball early and when it's out in front of her, Love look out. Too. Again, pinned way back behind the baseline. Some birds on the court. We've seen this throughout the tournament. The little swallows coming down to feed on the insects. <laughs> She's a bit worried about the birds. Better put up a sign to tell them where Capistrano is. Fifteen thirty. I think that was quite distracting for Teresa. They're having a feeding frenzy down there. You can hear the birds as well. Fifteen forty. Only her second double fault, but it puts her under the gun here. Two break back points for Mahalikova. Totally unforced error by Mahalikova. Saves one break point for Swan. 34. Ah! 
Well, she's really let her off the hook there. Yes. yes. It's just a game where Halakova needed to look for the break back. A couple of chances gone begging. Sounded uh, like a cry of pain it. there as she propped. Right there. That's just missed. So Mahalakova yeah, gets the break back. Back on serve. Swan leading 3 2. Second set, Mahalakova. Swan took the first 6 1. But on the second last point there, there was a definite indication from uh, Swan that she's feeling that uh, adductor problem. The right thigh. Well, she's not even. Sitting down in the changeover, Katie. She's standing, which is pretty unusual. Is that a sign of resignation? I don't mean that she's going to forfeit the match, but just. She may be a little emotional. I think she's getting very frustrated with um, her physical impairment out there, that's for sure. Time. Let's first service. Law fifteen. Couldn't get the ball wide enough, Mahalakova. That's well, a nice move around from Swan. And again, didn't try to do too much with that. Well measured. Fifteen on. Thirty fifteen. Forty fifteen. She's obviously struggling with that leg, so certainly Swan will be looking for the quicker points. The trigger quite early in this game, especially off that forehand side. Ace. Great serving. Game Halikova. Three games all.
even though she's now based in Wichita, Kansas, has been for two years because of her father's job. Katie Swan still plays with the support of the British LTA. Very much British. Many of her matches have been watched here by the Fed Cup captain, Judy Murray. Fifteen. He's also been tweeting her support. Is Katie looking to be the first British player to break through here and win since Annabelle Croft did in the Junior Girls in 84? Continue to support Swan. She's an uh, outstanding young player, still representative for Great Britain at the junior level. Oh, high hopes held for her with British tennis. Always talk of the next big thing, and Laura Robson, the last to reach the final here. Clever shot placement, Swan. 15, she 30. needs all her cunning. Yeah, Laura Robson, the finalist here in 2009 and 2010. And Kate, Katie cops a bit of uh, stirring because her accent is a real hybrid of British and American. Whoa! Her American friends think she talks funny. Talks posh. British. <laughs> and uh, her... English friends think she has the American twang. It doesn't take long to pick up that twang. Thirty old. Uh, if you're in the United States for any amount of time, you've got to adopt it to make yourself understood. She's still going to school all the time and her parents are very big on that. They want her to have that normal grounded life as long as she can stay at school. Whoa. Only 15. A lot of young players leave and do distance education. She's more than holding her own here. 40, 30. I've done that distance education thing. It's no fun. It's improved, obviously, immeasurably in the computer age. I did it living in Borneo, return mail from Australia was five weeks. Deuce. Well, she didn't move well to that at all, didn't cut off the angle. Stopping a step or two short. time she can between points here. Ah! Ah! Challenge. Yes. Swan is challenging the yes. call on the right service line. Ball was called out. Uh, if it is out, it's going to put her down break point. It's good. Good girl. Brave challenge. The right one. First serve. Deuce. Uh, 
Advantage, Mialikova. Uh, that's the break. She was up 40-15, but uh, Swan just unable to match it with Mahalikova, and she now leads by four games to three. Well, sadly for Katie Swan, this injury really does seem to be affecting her movement out here, and I would think that she's playing through quite a bit of pain. She's getting some more treatment at the changeover. She'll be allowed two treatments at changes of ends. That will be the maximum for that one injury. Obviously very tight. She's going to get some strapping. Forward movement has less impact on that type of injury, but she's getting very few opportunities to move forward. It's the lateral movement side to side that puts the pressure on when you have to prop land on that leg and uh, it's troubling her more and more as this uh, second set goes on. Time. See here, doubled up in pain, both at the leg and missing the shot. And this is all part of the experience, learning to be a tennis player and handle these sorts of situations. It's tough. And controlling the emotions when you're having to deal with pain in the biggest match of your young career, it's not an easy task. Mahalikova showing no mercy. You wouldn't expect her to. Well, tough for her too. She's got to concentrate knowing that her opponent is struggling with an injury. She's got to be aware of it, not let it bother her, rather try and exploit it. 30 left. But not get into that thought of going for too much. The support crew would be very happy with what they're seeing out here. Some precision serving. Really find some good angles with the serve. Very case tough for Swan to even get a good hit on that return. And that's been the case for much of this match. Game, Love game, and five games to three. Leads. Five games. A set and five, three. Toughest service game of the match for uh, Katie Swan coming up. Well, she has to try and break that run of points against her. It's been all Mahalikova winning the last seven points on the trot. Fifteen left. Interesting to see how Mahalikova responds here. So close to victory, whether she tightens up a little bit. Mm. I do think she has in these opening two points. Putting the hand up to the face after each one.
15. Worked her way through this point. Hello, Kova. Measured point, but again, taking her opportunity to come forward. Yeah, really feel for Katie Swan. She's had such a good tournament. Upsetting higher ranked players, but that marathon effort against Delma Gulfi yesterday really looks like it's taken it out of her physically. Ended up with soreness and injury. And that brings up championship point for Mahalakova. Saved by uh, Swan. Deuce. Less pressure on the leg moving forward and uh, gets into that net position and uh, saves the day for the time being. Those shots are tough. Advantage, Mihaly Kova. Mihaly Kova poised. Another chance to take the title. Net cord to Swan's assistance. Yes. Well, she was on the attack again there, Mihalikova. Unlucky for her, the shot tipping the top of the net, forcing her into retreat. Advantage Swan. Game Swan. So Swan holding on survives two championship New points. Balls, please. Down to Mahala Kova to try and serve it out. Alikova leads, five games to four. All gutsy effort from Katie Swan, but she did have a little bit of help there with Mahala Kova tightening up that little bit. She didn't play some of those points to win them. She played them not to lose. Was hoping she'd get an error from Swan. Must cause a pain to sit down. We haven't seen her sitting down at the changeovers since she took the medical timeout. Leading three love in this second set.
Rod Laver Arena, the centrepiece of uh, Time. Melbourne Park. And Melbourne Park, part of one of the great sporting environments in the world, flanked by Melbourne Park and the former Olympic Park, now redeveloped as a world-class soccer stadium. Fifteen. Important first point there for Swan. Mahalakova could get a little bit worried here. Great yes. shot. Outstanding forehand, Swan. Olaf thirty. She's going to go after her shots here, and this is dangerous for Mahalakova, who tightened up that little bit in the last game. She's going to have to really step up to win this, come up with some good serves. That's the backhand. 15, 13. Well, Swan's already saved two match points in this match in the previous game. Let's not forget that she saved three match points in her semi-final. Lost the first set in that six love. Came back to win the second in a tie break and fought out the third. Trying to loosen the arm up. A championship point again for the Slovak 40, player. 30. Mahalakova. That'll do it. Game, set, match. Mihalikova. Two sets to love, 6-1, six, 6-4. Six, a crying shame for Katie Swan that she was not able to give of her uh, best in this match, but take nothing away from Mahalakova. Year older, taller, stronger. Whether or not Swan could have produced a different result had she been in top physical condition, it's a debate that she'll be having with herself for uh, quite some time to come. <laughs> yes, go on. Thank you so much. Mother and coach congratulating Mahalakova, Jan Studenich, her coach, and Mother Lenka. Looking out for her interests here. And she's done a pretty good job of looking out for them herself. Been a great tournament for Katie Swan, but Teresa Mihalikova, she is the champion, and what a great moment for her, and a big thing for tennis in Slovakia. A first junior champion for them here at the Australian Open.
played a good match. Aggressive, we saw her around the net doing some great things. But Katie Swan, only 15 years of age, she will be feature not only in the juniors, but you would think on the tour as well. Match was played in such a lovely spirit. And it was great to see the girls embrace at the end friends as well as tremendous competitors out here today. And a consolation hug from uh, Mahala Kova. She knows how difficult it was for, uh, for Swan. Constrained physically as a result of the exertions in the semi final and uh, the adductor muscle strain in the right thigh required uh, treatment that had obviously restricted her through the first set, took the injury time out after the first three games. Second set, she was up a break at that point and hoping, hoping that uh, the treatment might uh, give her sufficient physical conditioning to see it through and take the match perhaps to a third set but uh, it just uh, didn't work ultimately had strapping applied but again it was just too tough Mahalakova with great first serve potency in the, that match she converted 81 percent of first serves for the match 25 winners to 11 a very telling statistic also and Teresa Halakova able to keep those unforced errors under control. Fewer than her winner count. She did a great job. Break points, she won four of 12, created a lot of opportunities. And the net points one was also a major factor in the match. She set herself up by being aggressive, getting forward in the court, and showed us some great skills around the net. Yeah, tremendous uh, percentage result for uh, the net game for Mahalakova. Hey, you want to come with us? and in turn restricting the ability of uh, Katie Swan to shorten up the points and the longer the points went the more pressure on the injured leg the more difficult it became for the young British girl. Time for the presentation. <laughs> 